Namaqua land, region of incredible contrasts and fabulous wealth, is a little known portion of South Africa extending more than 600 miles along the west coast. With a scant rainfall, it looks as if it could support no life, yet its scrub bush provides food for the sheep and horses that are raised here. Unexpected waterfalls gush forth from this grim, hard country. Here, still untouched, lie unguessed deposits of base metals and minerals, gold, tungsten, chrome, asbestos, and above all, diamonds. There is such mineral wealth elsewhere in South Africa that this El Dorado of riches has scarcely been tapped. In 1928, when alluvial diamonds were found here like pebbles on a beach, government control had to be taken to prevent collapse of the world's diamond market. September in Namaqualand is the month of miracles, for from this seemingly unproductive sandy ground springs a magic carpet of varied blossoms extending to the horizon. The flowers are of course completely uncultivated and of an astonishing variety. One can barely take a step in this fairyland without crushing the blossoms which cluster so thickly underfoot. No season anywhere arrives as lovely as this Namaqualand springtime. Cape Town people and nature lovers all over the Union take the Namaqualand trip in September to enjoy this incongruous display of wild flowers and desert color schemes. The golden South African daisy grows as thickly as weeds in an unkempt garden patch, and the sun shines down upon almost every variety of wild bloom. The bee certainly must be dizzy with the variety of flowers offering their sweet pollen. Everything from the unusual red-hot poker to the aptly named pincushion protea and the more common gold flowers. Flowers which are carefully planted and tended in other parts of the world grow here in the wild state in a profusion that would turn the professional cultivator green with envy. There are flowers as delicate as the hothouse orchid and yet, the beautiful chinchurin chi is, is so hardy that when cut, it will last six weeks indoors with a minimum of care. This desert, indeed, blossoms into a rose. On a cross-country trip from the Makwaland, one passes two of the richest spots in the world, Kimberley, where diamonds are found aplenty, and Johannesburg, source of the world's greatest gold supply. The journey from coast to coast is a thousand miles. South Africa also is the land of wide open spaces. Starting from the southern portion of the province of Natal, the traveler on his way to Zululand finds driving a pleasure. All over South Africa, in the environs of the large cities, is a network of excellent roads and highways which lure the joyriders out into the open. No visitor to Natal, South Africa's garden province, should miss the drive which takes him past the valley of a thousand hills, considered one of the wonders of the Union. Like a giant city of ant hills, the undulating valley spreads for miles, hill after hill, looming up one after the other. The American traveler is reminded of Virginia's similar skyline drive when coming upon this beautiful section of Natal.
old-fashioned ferry brings the traveler into Zululand. The Zulu, most famous of the black races, mainly inhabits a reserve of 10,000 square miles set aside for them by the government, where white men may not buy farms or land. Here, a white magistrate guides the Zulus in self-government. Encouraged to retain the best of their tribal customs and traditions, they're nevertheless gradually learning the advantages of health clinics, the ways of justice, and improved farming methods. It's hard to believe that these peaceable, handsome blacks were once the terror of white colonists whom they ambushed and slaughtered in fearful battles. The story of white pioneers and the black peoples in South Africa parallels in many respects the story of early settlers in the American Indian. The Zulus are noted for their handicraft, and these majestic and proud natives are not oblivious to the good business transactions they can make with tourists and buyers who come from the curio shops of Cape Town, Johannesburg, and Durban. Atop his dignified curly head is a millinery creation as far from practical and quite as fanciful as the craziest Paris creation. Not only does Zululand offer the fascination of a dignified Zulu tribe, but the ambitious and hardy tourist may hike to his heart's content amidst the loveliest of scenery, or he may sit lazily astride a donkey and view the countryside at ease. When hiking loses its flavor and the feet would like a vacation, it's time to hit the road on wheels to Zululand's Shulue Game Reserve. Here, the eager sightseer may see many important species of wild animals. But in this game reserve, the visitor strains his eyes, mainly to catch a glimpse of the famous rhinoceros, both the more common black and the extremely rare white rhino. who want the thrill of seeing the mammoth creature in a close-up view, there are Zulu game guards to guide the intrepid visitor. With extreme caution, closer and closer they approach, ready to jump for safety at the slightest crackling of a twig. There he is, the erratic black rhino, a three-ton tank complete with armor plate. He can run 45 miles an hour, and he's so short-sighted that in pursuit, he often misses his objective. He's not very bright, but his tough and terrible horns can wreak havoc on whatever arouses his violent temper. His cousin, the white rhino, rarest mammal in the world and found only in Zululand, is a more peaceable creature, but few people would care to test unarmed his placid nature. In the Shlulue Game Reserve, 300 of these titans live undisturbed by hunters' guns. Thanks for the trip, Charlie, but now it's back to civilization. The Zulu leads his oxen beside the modern automobile. And so, the visitor returns to the city with fresh proof that South Africa is indeed the land of contrasts.